Hello, hello everybody! Welcome to today's video. I want to spread some knowledge and cool facts about Dead by Daylight. So I'm going to throw this book of knowledge at you. Let's get into it. Starting with number one, the heartbeat mechanic is a pretty nifty tool inside the accessibility tab in settings. When activated, a visual heartbeat pulses when a killer approaches, providing two distinct ways to identify the presence. Whether it's the specific sound of a killer or the regular heartbeat noise, this feature becomes invaluable in a group scenario. Imagine getting busy chatting with friends when a killer stinks up on you. Enable the heartbeat and voila, don't have to rely on sound. Now I gotta go hide from a pesky killer. Number two, in-game text, aka subtitle. This feature is also under the accessibility tab and is an in-game text, aka subtitles. This feature is pretty self-explained on its own, but it's really cool to have for a horror game. There's some really cool characters like Chucky, Nicolas Cage that come to mind. There's some really funny lines, and if you miss a part of it, boom, you can just read it instead. Before we get into the next part of the video, I want to say, go like and subscribe. I usually don't like promoting myself. I tend to use my cute beaver to sit, but we're going to push him off to the side. I really want to keep learning with editing, writing, creating my own jingles and sound effects, and talking, as this is so much fun. I would love to build a community to see how big we could grow. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video, and beaver out. Number three, the in-game search feature and how you can use it to your advantage to get even faster to the next game. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Killer and Survivor showcasing how valuable the search bar could be. If you type in hook or chest, it will only show you perks that have that word. Here's me looking at blindness and endurance effect. And this works for all search bars, add-ons, offerings, clothing, charms. And for my testing, whatever is in the information box, it will find that keyword. Number four, the obsession mechanic. The obsession mechanic works with a 25% odds of picking, but there are parts that can change how it functions and who it picks. And if you have a big tentacle on top of your player card, it means you are the killer obsession. And if the killer gets and chases you, the tentacle will start to move and also grow a tiny tentacle and every other survivor is able to see it. Now you might be going, hey Beaver, what about the other survivors? Well, don't you worry. There's also another aspect to the obsession and chase mechanic. When the killer chases a non-obsessed survivor, a small tentacle will pop up on the player card for who's being chased. A very cool mechanic to watch for is if you're doing a generator and trying to figure out where the killer is, look at the player cards and see that tentacles are moving on the player card. If they are, then most likely you're good to keep working. Just hope they don't run into you. <laughs> Number five, the HUD and how effects work and how much you can gain from it. The left side showcases icons for various survivor actions, chest, totems, generators, and health state, while the right side also offers a unique visual. Let's talk about the right side. There's two mechanics that are tied together, temporary effects and permanent effects. On the top right, when a killer perk activates against you, any temporary buffs or debuffs will be neatly displayed, resembling an analog clock system, providing crucial information on what effects are activated and its duration. For example, if the good guy, aka Chucky, hooks another survivor and you are the obsession, friends to the end will activate and you'll see the perk icon pop up on the top right, and then whatever temporary effect from that perk will start. So for friends to the end, you'll get the exposed as effect and it'll start ticking down. Here's all the temporary effects at the moment in the game. Feel free to pause if you want to read up, I'll also put the wiki in the description. On the bottom right is the player effect system, displaying perks that have a permanent effect from an action. Hey, this is actually Future Beaver. I just wanted to interject. I was working on the visual to show you all the perks or items or add-ons that affect the player mechanic, and wow, there's a lot. And it makes a pretty nice period. I was going to do all the descriptions, but there's too many to cover. So here's all their perks or items or add-on pictures. And also, the new character, Adam Walk, his deadline makes a nice fit for the next layer of the pyramid. Anyways, back to the past beaver. For example, Edward Bishop's Prove Thyself will show up for other survivors in the corner when you get in radius of the generator they are working on. Like killer perks, they activate when you get hit, and you will see what perk they, they use that could have a permanent effect. So for example, Franklin's Demise, when he hits you with that perk, you will drop your item and it'll show up on the bottom with an analog clock telling you how long till the item runs out of charge if you don't pick it up. And another example, like Nemesis Hysteria Perk, if you're injured, it will be on the bottom of the screen, and the second he injures a fully healthy survivor, the temporary effect Hysteria will be added to you, and gives you a clue on how to counter it, and gives you the awareness to rush to get a full heal done, or be ready for the debuff. For the final segment of the hub, we're going to talk about the bottom of the screen, the proficiency indicator, and the progression bar, and it pops up when doing an action. So he chest, healing, totems, generator, and exegates. This can vary a lot based on perks and effects. It has three colors 
whitish blue does one charge per second, yellow is higher than one charge per second, and red is below one charge per second. An action has a certain amount of charge that you need to put in it for it to complete. For example, a generator needs 90 charges for it to complete, and if you have no buffs, debuffs, and you're not doing any great skill checks, it would take 90 seconds or a minute and 30 to complete a generator. And when you start stacking buffs or debuffs, you can see a small icon on the progression bar. A big note with the progression bar is it's individual based, meaning you only see what you're putting in. If you look at what's playing right now, you'll notice the bar went red the second he went on the generator, meaning I'm doing below one charge per second, but there's a speed icon. That's because on the generator, there's efficiency loss when stacked with more players. Here's a thing from the wiki showing how the penalty works. So imagine I had a toolbox though. I could be doing over one charge point per second, but he has nothing, so he'd be only doing 0.85 charge points a second, meaning we could stack it to some crazy charge per second, but you only see what you're putting into the pot. And then for the heal in action, there are 16 charges to fully heal someone, and standard healing is one charge per second and doubles to two charges per second when two people are healing, one survivor. And then perks and items can increase the charge per second as well. Already, time for our trivia question. Why are the permanent positive effects turquoise color? A. Separate color palette of mechanics. B. Connected to the mist lore. C. Part of an old mechanic. 15 seconds on the clock. Time is up! It was C. The original color scheme of the game was turquoise and red, and then they changed it to yellow and red. Now we're at the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. This was a lot of fun making. If you want me to try something like this again, comment down below and join my Discord in the description. You're all amazing. Audio.